Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to evaluate an expression using our half angle formulas. Now, um, basically what we have in here is uh, we're, we, we're given an, an equation, tangent of alpha is equal to 4 um, four thirds. And what we want to do is identify what is going to be uh, the half angle for sine of that half angle, the cosine of the half angle, or tangent of the half angle. Now, the main important thing is we're not given a value like I've done before. Before, we were like, given you know, an actual angle in radians or degrees and say, hey, find the half value. Um, or in the other ones, we were given a triangle. But in this case, we're not. We're just given an equation, and we're given a constraint. But what's very important about that is the equation and the constraint are going to allow us to create our uh, triangle that we're going to use. So. I'm going to erase this, but I'm going to draw it nice and big for right now. So remember, when you're kind of drawing you know, a nice coordinate axis, if you start at 0, which is our initial point, and kind of go over, to go over here is going to be 90 degrees. Here would be 180 degrees. Here would be 270 degrees. And as you keep on going around, you get all the way to 360 degrees. So they're saying that our triangle has to be between 180 degrees of Alpha has to be between 180 and 270. That means I need to create a triangle in the third quadrant. Now remember, when we're creating our triangle, that triangle has to have a central angle, which is going to be alpha, and it has to be a right angle with the x-axis. Now the next thing we need to do is use our equation to start filling in some of the sides. But we need to know what those sides are. So the first thing is identifying the hypotenuse, which is the easiest, which is always directly across from the right angle. And then these are going to be your two legs. Now remember. We have ways to classify the legs further depending on where our angle that we're going to be using. So whenever the leg that is between your right angle and your angle, uh, your angle you're using, that is going to be your adjacent side. And the angle opposite of that is going to be called the leg opposite of that is going to be opposite. So now we know that tangent, now remember the ratio of tangent is opposite leg over adjacent leg. So therefore, we can say that, ow. 4 is going to be my opposite side, and a 3 is going to be my adjacent side. Now, um, here comes in a little bit portion again with my constraints. We know that 3 and 4 works for that, or 4 and 3 work for that, right? But 4 and 3 don't really work for this picture here. And the reason why is my triangle is in the third quadrant. If you're going to the left, 3 is not positive. 3 is negative. If you're going down, 4 is not positive. 4 is negative. Well, then how does it work if they're negative there but not negative there? Well, remember, negative 4 divided by negative 3 is what? Positive 4 thirds. So that works. Um, OK, and now we need to be able to figure out our hypotenuse. Now, when figuring out the hypotenuse, you could use Pythagorean triples, which in this case we could. Or if you're not familiar with that, you could always use the Pythagorean theorem. And let's just call this side x, so therefore I do Negative 4 squared plus negative 3 squared equals x squared. That becomes 16 plus 9 equals x squared. 25 equals x squared. Square root, square root, plus or minus 5 equals x. Remember, this represents the hypotenuse, though. So the hypotenuse is always going to be positive. So that's going to be a 5. OK, now the last thing we need to do is identify, at least for sine and cosine, we need to you know, remember the, uh, oh, actually, let, let's write down the formulas. So I'll erase this in just a second, but there's one last thing I want to teach. So if we're going to evaluate, so if we're talking about tangent of the an alf angle, alpha equals 4, 4 over 3, we are going to evaluate for sine of half that angle. So we have to use the half angle formula, which for sine is going to be plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine of theta divided by 2. Now for sine and theta, especially when we're, when we're, dealing, with, um, when we're dealing with an angle that's you know, in one of the quadrants or a constraint, anything that has tells us in the different quadrants, we've got to pay attention to that plus or minus. And this kind of threw me for a loop. I kind of forgot about it when I had up there. So if we're evaluating, it's very important to know where our angle pi halves lies. And see, what's common here is if, if sine is negative, where pi halves lies, then we're going to use the negative of the square root. If sine is positive where pi half lies, then we're going to use the positive. Now, you might say, well, this triangle here, sine, you know, the watt, that's negative and cosine's negative. Yes, but this is for alpha. We want to figure out what quadrant is alpha, alpha divided by 2. So what I'm going to do is actually divide everything by 2 here. 
By dividing everything by 2, I get 90 degrees is less than or equal to alpha divided by 2, which is less than or equal to 135 degrees. Well, 90 and 135 is in the second quadrant. So cosine is still going to be negative, but sine is going to be positive. It's a small little thing, but it's very, very important to make sure you know the difference because basically you get it right or wrong. If you do everything else right, you can still get the problem right or wrong based on the addition or, subtra or being at plus or minus. So very important. All right, if I wish I just had an eraser. OK, so I'm going to erase all this stuff here. All right. Um, so now we, we have this. Oh, what am I doing? We're talking about alpha, not theta. OK, so now basically what we're going to do is go ahead and evaluate. Oops, I, f I erased the triangle, but I, I erased everything, but I didn't really mean to erase the whole triangle. I still want to have this as 5, negative 4, negative 3. That's your adjacent side, and that's your opposite side. OK, so remember, cosine represents uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. So now I'm going to start plugging in my information. So I have, I don't need to write the plus sign, 1 minus negative 3 over 5 divided by 2. First thing I'm going to want to do is combine my numerators. So that's going to, I'm going to combine them so they have the same denominator over, as over here. So that's going to be 5 over 5 minus a negative. So that's going to be plus 3 over 5 divided by 2. Now I can combine my fractions in my numerator. And by doing that, I get 8 over 5 divided by 2. So now I have a fraction divided by a whole number. So the best thing, what I like to do here, is rewrite my whole number as a fraction. So therefore, I can see I can multiply by, my, by the reciprocal on the top and the bottom. Because remember, anytime you multiply a number by its reciprocal, that's going to go to 1. And that's going to leave me with the square root of 8 over 10. Ah, 8 over 10, which I should have reduced that. Really, it's 4 over 5. I was like, what the heck? That's not where I remember the answer being. OK, so now I have the square root of 4 over 5. Well, when you take the square root of a fraction, you can separate that by taking the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. So I'll break that up as the square root of 4 over the square root of 5. Well, the square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of 5, we cannot simplify. So I leave it as a square root of 5. However, I can rationalize the denominator by multiplying by the square root of 5 in the top and the bottom. And what I end up with is 2 times the square root of 5 divided by square root of 5 times square root of 5 is the square root of 25, which ends up just giving you 5. Ta-da. OK, so now let's go and get with cosine. Now remember, I left that cosine, make sure it's negative. Now we're just going to go and plug in what the formula is. So the formula is going to be 1 plus cosine of alpha divided by 2. So again, now, simply what we're going to do is just plug in the value of alpha for cosine, which is negative 3 over 5. So that becomes negative 1 plus negative 3 over 5 divided by 2. Well, again, just like I did over here, I'm going to rewrite those as the same, uh, same denominator to combine them. So that's a negative 5 over 5 minus 3 over 5, right? Plus a negative is the same thing as subtracting over 2. Now I can subtract 5 minus 3. The denominator remains the same. So I get 2 over 5. 2 over 5 divided by 2. Again, rewrite this as a fraction. Then I multiply as the reciprocal. So I do 1 over 2 times 1 over 2. Any fraction reciprocals, those divide out. Here, the 2's divide out. I'm left with the square root of 1 over 5. Going back, doing the same thing I did, break up the square root, the square root of 1 over the square root of 5. The square root of 1 is just 1. The square root of 5 remains the same. Then, again, I can go back and rationalize the denominator like I did up here. So I multiply by the square root of 5, multiply by the square root of 5. My end result is the square root of 5 divided by 5. Oops, and I got lazy and stopped writing the negative sign. Negative 
negative, negative. Answer is negative. And I just want to make sure that I wrote down the answer correctly because Perfect. OK, so now tangent is usually my favorite because we don't have to deal with any square roots, right? I mean, you could if you want to use the tangent, uh, tangent formula of plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine of theta divided by 1 plus cosine of theta. Or we can use our other two formulas, which is 1 minus cosine of u divided by sine of u, or sine of u divided by 1 plus cosine of u, or of alpha, which is our angle. Um, so I always like to use the one where my sine is in the denominator. So that formula looks like this. 1 minus cosine of alpha divided by sine of alpha. Okay. Again, these are your half angle formulas, which hopefully you have in front of you so you can verify. Then again, now remember cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be 1 minus a negative 3 over 5. Divided by sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's going to be negative 4 over 5. Again, get them to be the same denominator. So I'll rewrite these as 5 over 5. Minus a negative is plus. So that's 3 over 5 divided by a negative 4 fifths. Then combine these here. So that becomes 8 over 5 divided by negative 4 over 5. Now obviously, ladies and gentlemen, you can multiply by the reciprocal like I've done here and here. Or you can just realize that these are going to divide out anyways. So therefore, that's leaving me with an 8 divided by negative 4, which also is going to divide out to a negative 2. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you use half, a formula, half angle formulas to evaluate your expression. Thanks. <sighs>